Hey everyone, um, I don't know if you saw, but I posted on Facebook the other day that I am officially going to be running the United States Pro Kart Series race this weekend at Road America, which is one of my home tracks. Um, and I don't get to race very often anymore, so it's kind of a big deal for me. Um, and so I thought what I would do is I would go through, I'd pull the kart out, and I'd kind of give you guys an insight on what I like to do pre-race to make sure everything is tip-top shape for when we get there um, and we kind of hit the ground running because I think one thing that people miss out on a lot for racing is preparation and making sure all their equipment is good um, and they like to just show up with a dirty go-kart and stuff not tightened, bolts loose and stuff falls off the first session. So um, I think it's pretty important to go through a thorough kind of shakedown before you leave the track or before you leave your shop to go to the track. Um, so we'll kind of take a look at it, we'll clean the go-kart up, and we'll get it all ready to go and get the van packed up for a trip to Elkhart Lake in a couple days. guys we're back this morning to work on the go-kart um, we're gonna go into some of the things that I like to do pre-race um, to prepare for an event and kind of talk about you know some basic cart maintenance and some stuff to look for and some ways to keep your equipment in top running shape um, in between events some good habits to get into um, so as you can see we've got the cart here we've got a little table set up don't mind the messy shop. It's always messy and it'll always be messy probably. So um, I'm just gonna go over a few things here quick and uh, discuss what I like to do before we take off to get ready to go to an event. So um, obviously the first thing that you should be doing probably after the race day is over, not the day before you leave to go to another race is cleaning the go-kart. Um, Obviously, a clean go-kart looks nice. A clean go-kart um, also will help you do things like spot issues with the chassis. So like a lot of times what you'll see on carts is like if you come in here, these welds around some of these seat struts, they can get weak, especially if you've got a lot of weight on your seat. So these are known to break. Um, and if the cart is really dirty and covered in grease, you're not gonna be able to see that stuff. So um, it's a good habit to get into to just clean the frame like after, at the end of every day or wipe it down at least. Um, and then that'll help you pick out problems, you know, like cracks in the frame or something like that, some damage or something that maybe you didn't see. So, um, I mean, along with that, it's just good practice to clean the bodywork. We've got to give this pipe, this exhaust pipe, a scrub down because it's real rusty and gross looking. Um, and in general, we just got to clean this thing up a little bit. You know, you get dirt and crust inside some of these uh, bearings, like in here or on the axle bearings. And that stuff is just gonna uh, wear away and eat at those bearings and help them wear out faster. So we wanna make sure we get that stuff out of there um, and uh, get those bearings cleaned up too. I'll show you some of the products I like to use when I'm cleaning uh, my go-kart. So we've got a couple different products here that I like to use to clean the go-kart. Um, the first one I'm gonna talk about is brake cleaner. Um, Brake cleaner is really good for getting grease and dirt off the go-kart, but one thing you want to keep in mind is it can be really harsh on decals, um, and it can also be really harsh on your powder coating on your frame. It can start to eat away and soften that powder coating and make it a little bit duller and have a tendency to flake off a little bit more. So um, I don't like to use brake cleaner too much. What I honestly like to use is starting fluid, which is also an ether-based spray. Um, I just don't happen to have any sitting around right now, so I can't use any, but um, starting fluid is a little bit less harsh. It won't eat the decals, it won't eat the, the powder coating on the frame, but it kind of cleans just about as well as brake cleaner does. Um, so at the end of the day, what I like to do at the track is I like to have about a few cans of starting fluid with me, and I'll just spray the bearings and stuff out um, and just kind of wipe down some of the greasier parts of the frame. Um, but like I said, brake cleaner is a little bit too harsh for my taste, but it's all we kind of have right now, so we'll probably work with that today. Um, the other thing that I like to use is just good old WD-40. WD-40 is not very harsh. It's not going to eat any of the finishes or anything on any of your parts, but 
What it does a great job of is breaking down grease and wiping things clean. So I'll use it like to take some of the grease stains out of the uh, bodywork here. And um, it works great on like the chrome bars and stuff. It makes them nice and shiny. Um, the only issue with WD-40 is it leaves kind of a residue at the end of the day, which can kind of collect more dirt and dust. And uh, it gets your hands all greasy at the end of the day if you're using it. So um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll cut the grease off with WD-40 and then I'll grab something like Purple Power or Simple Green or some, some other kind of just degreaser, cleaner spray. Um, and that'll take the WD-40 off. Um, so it's kind of a multi-step procedure. Uh, WD-40 to cut the grease and then some sort of finished degreaser and cleaner to cut the WD-40 off. Um, and that should be a good start for most everything on the go-kart. Most everything on the go-kart is plastic, decal, and some metal. So, um, you know, you don't have to be too picky about what you use, but that's kind of the stuff I like to use. Go-to stuff that's easy to find and um, doesn't do too much damage to your stuff. So let's jump in and start cleaning this stuff. So as far as rags and stuff go, everyone always uses blue shop towels. It's kind of a go-to thing. Pretty easy to find. Those work great. Um, I happen to have a bunch of microfibers just laying around my shop. Um, so when possible, like if cleaning stuff that you want to not scratch, microfibers are better. Um, a blue shop towel is not soft. So this will be a little bit abrasive and it's gonna maybe, you know, scratch up your, your uh, finish on your powder coat or some of this other stuff that isn't as hard. The, the, the chrome should stand up fine. And honestly, blue shop towels are just fine for this stuff. But like I said, I happen to have these laying around so they're a little bit more usable for me. So what I'll do is I'll just, oh, we should turn this to spray. Give a little spray on all this stuff. We'll start with this bar here. And then just wipe it down. See, it's making it nice and shiny. Everyone loves shiny go-karts. The other thing too is like on these side pod bars, you get a lot of buildup of rubber in here, as you can kind of see. And that rubber can leave uh, black streaks all over everything. So WD-40 actually does a pretty good job of getting rid of that rubber too. One thing you want to be careful of. So I'm just using WD-40 on most of the, the um, frame here. Just because I don't want to use brake cleaner if I can avoid it. And this frame is a little bit beat up and old anyway. So... Some of it, like you can see, it's got some marks on it that aren't going to come clean. But, um, yeah, the one thing you want to be careful of is not getting WD-40 on your actual brakes here. You know, you don't want to be going out there with uh, lubricated brake rotors or pads. So, um, at the end of all this, once you're done cleaning, a good strategy to avoid that would be to actually just take some brake cleaner and spray this all out in here and that'll get all the crud off and it will also take any of the WD-40 off that you may have gotten on there or whatever other product you're using to clean. So I've just got some WD-40 on this rag here. We're just gonna kinda go through and clean as much of this frame. Oh, what is this? Some sort of chunk of, I don't know what that is, some kinda crusty thing on there. Um, anyway, we're just gonna go through and clean all this um, and wipe the frame down and uh, we'll come back and look at some other stuff after we're done with that Don't forget to uh, take your gas tank out right here and clean underneath your gas tank Wipe this all down and this helps you get underneath these bars and underneath the steering shaft a little bit better, too And then we'll have to clean the gas tank as well It's also helpful to uh, Take the chain guard off helps you get in these uh, areas by the bearing here a little bit better which can be kind of tight sometimes the chain guard just needs a little help so as you can see this is filthy in here so what we'll do is we'll take this is where we'll probably take brake cleaner and we'll spray some of this off and then the frame is real nasty so this is where brake cleaner really comes in handy because you can't or starting fluid, brake cleaner in our case, starting fluid if you have the correct tool for the job. Um, but it's really hard to get a uh, rag down in here. So this is where the brake cleaner comes in handy. 
So you can see, watch how this uh, cuts this grease right off. Looks brand new. So, brake cleaner is great for back here on the engine where you're getting all your chain lube. Like I said, I don't like to spray it on the frame, but we're just doing it this one time. And if you are using brake cleaner or starting fluid, make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area because this stuff is kind of nasty to inhale. But it just melts all of this grease. Cleans these bearings right out. We'll clean out in here a little bit too. This will give you a good chance to inspect your drive gear on the front there and see if it's in good shape. Ours looks pretty good, should be. It doesn't have a lot of time on it. So, all right. That's looking a lot better already. So then, I'll just come through here and try to get every little nook and cranny I can with the brake cleaner. Um, and then we'll just get this bearing right away too. It's not the most glamorous thing, but it's pretty effective. So after I do that, what I'll do is I'll just take a rag and just kind of wipe this down and dry it off because the longer the brake cleaner stays on there, the more it's gonna wanna eat your powder coat. So just wipe some of this stuff down. Get all your stickers clean on your engine. Chain lube is the real, it's the worst stuff here. It, it gets all over everything it flings and then it uh, really causes a lot of mess back here so we'll just clean this up a little bit and spray it down with WD-40 again to kind of wipe it down too this is exactly why we clean the go-kart I just realized that this sprocket is loose I don't know if you can see it but this whole sprocket is like okay look that bolt is spinning, that bolt is spinning. All three of these bolts are finger loose. So that's exactly why we clean the go-kart. So we can find stuff like that. Okay, cool, good to know. I'm gonna tighten that now. Make sure you get both ends. So the magnesium hubs on here, or aluminum hubs if you're running aluminum hubs, um, can corrode against the uh, steel of the axle so it's always good um, sometimes maybe just to take some emery cloth or some light sandpaper and uh, if you can't wipe this off with just WD-40 or something uh, it might be good to sand that down a little bit to keep burrs and rough edges off that axle so again slides out easier when you're going to do an axle change because most of the time when you're doing an axle change it's not like oh we've got a couple hours to kill let's enjoy uh, a bottle of water and a sandwich and we'll change the axle in our spare time usually if you're changing an axle it's uh, a bit of a production you've got something that you're really trying to tune out of the go-kart or worst case scenario you bent an axle in a wreck so it's always nice if we can keep that clean and then we don't have to worry about you know hitting it with a hammer 4,000 times uh, trying to get it out later now if I was being really thorough um, I would take this engine off and I would clean the, clean the frame rails here where the engine was sitting because that gets a lot of gunk on there as you can see but um, I'm not being really thorough because this thing's going on the track tomorrow and uh, we'll probably be taking the engine off at some point tomorrow anyway so I'm just gonna leave that gunk there and then when we change engines at some point or uh, at the end of the day tomorrow after our first practice day I will uh, clean that up then one thing I am gonna do though is this chain is really loose um, probably stretched out a little bit and uh, probably had something to do with this gear being loose could have stretched the chain out a little bit further so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this engine up and I'm gonna move it forward just a tick I don't even know if this is the right gear for tomorrow but uh, if it is I don't want to forget about that so um, I'm gonna loosen this up move the engine forward and tighten this chain just a hair generally on my chains I like to get it just before it touches this clutch cover on the KA this one as you can see quite a bit looser than that, so we'll tighten that up quick. Wrong wrench. I 
don't even know why we have this 10 millimeter in there. We don't use it for anything. Sometimes people think setting the chain is really annoying, and I kind of agree that it is. Um, so my preferred way to do it, like a lot of times you'll be tightening it, loosening it, tightening it, loosening it, and it, you can never get the tension right. So um, I like to just scoot it forward like a couple of millimeters with this uh, bottle or with this um, engine stop here. Most cars have an engine stop these days, and then I'll snug that up so it can't move. And then that's maybe a little tight. And then I'll set it and see where it's at. And if I need to adjust it, I can adjust it a few mil either way that way. And I always tighten the front clamp first. And usually when you tighten the front, it'll make the chain too tight. And then when you tighten the rear, it'll bring that back down again. And it'll loosen it back up. So let's see. We're a little bit tight right now. So that's a little bit tight. So most chains, they have like a tight spot in them. So you can see, well, maybe you can't see. I don't know. But right here, it's pretty tense, pretty tight. Right here, it's pretty loose. So we're gonna try to get that tight spot to be a little bit looser. So we went a little bit too far. So I only moved the engine forward like three, four millimeters. So sometimes adjusting the tension is all. So okay, we found the tight spot. So right here's the tight spot. So we'll go back a few, a few millimeters from there. So the tight spot is right there. Tighten our engine stop up. And I like to rock the engine a little bit because that'll get it square on the frame rails. Sometimes when you're tightening it, it'll be a little bit askew. And then when you go to clamp it down, it's like way different than you thought it was going to be in terms of tension. So if you rock it a little bit on the frame rails. So we got a pretty bad tight spot in there, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to put a new chain on tomorrow probably anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. I just want to make sure if I go out and don't for, and don't remember that the chain was loose, that I don't throw a chain in the first session. All right. So that's tight. Again, another reason exactly why we're cleaning and prepping the cart like this. I would not have known that that chain was too loose until tomorrow morning, either when it came off in the first session or. Um, I would have noticed it before practice. I might have been rushing and hustling to get it uh, tightened before the session. I might have missed the session. So it's good that we were looking at it now. All right, so we got our exhaust back on. I forgot to mention when that exhaust is off, it's good to make sure that you don't have any cracks like um, here around the uh, actual exit of the exhaust or any of these screws have made a crack or something in here so you have no leaks. Um, check the welds over, make sure they look good so there's no leaks there. Um, and then before I forget, well, this is empty, so we need to grab another can of brake cleaner. I need to go to the chemical store, apparently. We've got 17 bottles of chain lube over here, but we don't have any. We literally, we literally have seven bottles of chain lube. I haven't raced in two years. We have seven bottles of chain lube, and I have no brake cleaner. Oh, found some. All right, more brake cleaner. So before, we want to make sure we clean this out before I forget, because we did spray WD-40 on this uh, axle. Give that a quick spray. Spin it. Whoa! Sprayed my battery. Not good. Spray that out. All right. So that's all pretty much clean. So for the most part, I think the frame is pretty well clean. Now we'll move on to the bodywork. So the bodywork, it's less critical in terms of safety or um, parts checking over to make sure everything's okay, because the bodywork is probably going to be fine. It's meant to be beat up on, so, um, but you can see how dirty it is. So I'm just going to spritz it with WD-40 a little bit, give it a wipe, and that takes pretty much everything off. And then the WD-40 actually does a pretty decent job of cleaning up this plastic too. Um, so we'll go through and we'll use WD-40 on pretty much all the body work. Um, and then when we're done, we'll get everything on the cart that we need to. And we will wipe the body work with like a, a, a degreaser to get all the, the residue off. 
All right, so we're gonna clean the nose here. This is my practice nose. It's got a hole here that's covered up by decal, and then it's got another hole right there. So this thing's no good for racing, basically, but this is gonna be my practice nose. So we'll wipe this thing down quick. So this bodywork has a matte finish on the decals, which doesn't clean quite as easily as the gloss stuff. Looks cooler, but it doesn't clean quite as nice. Uh, I have no affiliation with Rainax, but I found this on my shelf. And dude, if you want to get some bug guts off your go-kart, this works perfectly. It does exactly what it says it does. It uh, takes bug and tar junk off your cart. All right, so the bodywork is pretty much clean. Um, I think the cart's pretty much ready to go in terms of clean. Um, but what I like to do next is to kind of go through and do my own little tech inspection to make sure that the bolts are tight, make sure there's clips on stuff that needs to be safety clipped. We also need to clean this floor pan before we stop. But um, so doing this long enough, I kind of know what all of tech procedure is, what they look for on everything. So we'll go through and we'll just kind of look. So we, you're, you're gonna need clips on your kingpins, got those. Clips on your tie rods, got those there, got one there. Um, clip down here. This might need a clip on it. I'm not sure. It's got a space for one. I don't know if it needs one. Uh, probably. We'll wire that or clip it. Um, clip down here. Clip over here. Oh, missing a clip right there, so we'll have to get a clip for that. We won't pass safety tech. Um, steering hub. Clip, clip, clip. Gonna need a clip there. Come back here. Braking system. Gonna need to wire the uh, mounting points for the braking. So we'll wire those and we'll grab some clips out of my toolbox and we'll clip all the stuff that we're missing. All right, things are clipped, things are wired. Um, final things you wanna look at is make sure that your brakes work. I tested that, I spun this. My brakes work. Um, zip tie things, like if you wanna keep your battery on, you know, go through and make sure things like this are zip side down, your um, EGT. Um, zip tie on your fuel line. Um, I like to do this. Check and make sure that my throttle stop is in the right place and I'm getting full throttle and I'm getting return on the throttle so we don't have a sticky throttle. Um, and other than that, it's pretty well done and ready to go. Um, and we'll start packing stuff in the van. But first, I think we should start it up make sure it runs that's kind of a pretty key important part uh is making sure that this thing runs so let's fire it up 